Hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and it is with great honor and great pleasure that I bring you one of my favorite works of all time, Bloodborne, the official artworks. Now, if you know me, if you've if you've ever watched a single video that I've pr produced, you will know that my walls are adorned with Miyazaki's influence. And of course, I'm referring to Hidetaka Miyazaki, the producer of the Soul series, which include Dark Souls, which I've already reviewed in the past. You can go check it out right here as well as Sekiro, book not officially released, not at least not an affordable copy of it that I could find, and of course, none other than Bloodborne. And although Miyazaki's artistic influences and his styles and the things he likes to express uh, is very multifaceted. He's a very diverse artist who likes to explore a lot of different things. But all of that, all of his artwork is under the umbrella of his methodology and his, and his design principles. And it's through those principles, through Miyazaki's principles, that I found a great amount of my own inspiration and my own art. And I, I've thanked him publicly numerous times, and I'm about to do it again. So why don't we crack this open? And the first thing I like to mention in my book reviews, if you've ever watched any of my book reviews, is first impressions. Think of this as your artistic portfolio. If you're new to my channel, this is predominantly an art channel. I also do art tech reviews and stuff like that, but I like to take an artistic perspective because there's that's what we as artists can value, looking over these artworks and stuff like that. And what you're doing, whenever you open up a book, it is, it's setting an expectation. And the expectation here, there's a lot being said in this original piece of splash art, which also incidentally is the cover art for the game as well. But what it's establishing is the architecture, the mood, the atmosphere, the location, the time, but it's also establishing the narrative. And by narrative, if you followed any of Miyazaki's work, and one of the things that I love about Miyazaki's work is the fact that he leaves a lot to your imagination. He doesn't over-define his story, over-define his characters. He just peppers the game everywhere with clues and leaves it to you to connect the dots. Um, I'm extremely excited to see how Miyazaki and uh, J.R. Martin, the author of Game of Thrones, what they're going to create with Elden Ring. But Miyazaki's characters, particularly in the Soul series, are generally faceless ones, especially when you're looking at the in-game or the, or the splash art. Then we break into some character designs, and again, you can see that the, the, the characters generally have a very mysterious, very demure, very calming, melancholy kind of feel to it. And Bloodborne is the epitome of Miyazaki's darker vision, as far as that goes. But not dark in the disgusting, gross, depressing sense of the word, more in the melancholy, elegant, dark, moody, artistry side of it. Now, as we get into the architecture and the design, look at the beautiful attention to detail. If you can see this, let me zoom in a little bit more so you can, you can, we can enjoy a little bit more of these finer details over here. Notice that it's not just a room with furniture in it. Look at the age and decay. Look at the, how much attention is being put towards all of these little bits of litter. This is the hunter's dream for anybody who's played the game, the design for the hunter's dream. Remember that it's not just your job to draw a room, but you're actually trying to transport somebody into a fictional world. You're trying to, as they say, suspend disbelief. You're trying to create a sense of believability in your artwork, not just realism, and those things shouldn't be confused. And a lot of that has to do with mood and, and the, the actual overall atmosphere and mood of a piece, which is a very strong focus of these games, which is why it inspires artists so much. I love these referencing these old, iconic, very disturbing and uncomfortable looking wooden wheelchairs. Imagine like people who were in insane asylums or hospitals, they would have to sit in these very uncomfortable metal and wood wheelchairs and stuff like that. I can't imagine that being very pleasant. Some nice designs, the hunter and all of his different attire. I love the fashion design. They referenced a lot of fashion. Now to the illustrators who did the Scourge Beast, I understand the orthographic view here, but do we really need to see such a compelling view of, of our Scourge Beast friend's butthole? <laughs> Who, by the way, kicks your ass before you even, even enter? They establish very quickly, you're gonna get your ass handed to you when you're not even out of the building that you start in and you confront this guy, who's about 10 times your size and mean as shit and he, he, he one-shots you. Basically saying, settle down, you're in for a ride. Again, look at all of this 
Look at all of this design. Look at the moss growing on the walls, the ripped up newspaper clippings that are up on the wall, the hanging pieces of fabric, the, the old rope, the water, the sludge. You can look at any square inch of any of any scene, any piece of artwork, any level in the game, any piece of clothing and see a heavy level of detail in it. And that's what keeps you engaged. Look at the laundry. I don't know what poor sap is doing the laundry in this environment, but sure enough, somebody needs, somebody needs clean britches, it seems. Look at how everything encompasses that mood of rot and decay. I love these leather designs. Again, look at here. Let's zoom in. You got to see this. Look at how much weathering has been applied to these costumes. Not only that, all these little details, these hooks, these straps, all these little things. Look at how much effort's been put into detailing these clothes. The rotted corpses, this little prick, who, who you, if you know how to play the game, his demise is the most unfortunate one. Wink, wink. I'll let you play the game to figure that one out. Look at the ambiance. Look at the beautiful use of light and atmosphere and all the rotting wood. I mean, this is, this is not a feast for the eyes. You might not know this, but I actually discovered Bloodborne, not through the announcement of the game, but I discovered Bloodborne through Darkin, Mike Lim. Uh, he did uh, um, a, some fan art of Bloodborne, and I went, Bloodborne, what's that? And I looked, and I absolutely loved his design. So looking at, at Darkin's work prompted me to go and check out what Bloodborne were, was, and when I did, I went, oh my God. And that was shortly before I literally bought my a PlayStation 4 so I could play Bloodborne because all of my games were generally on the PC. I played Dark Souls on the PC originally, Father Gascoigne. The other thing that I love is that there is a very deep narrative behind every character in it. The music box, for instance, and the little girl who talks to you through the window. There's so many tragic stories that play around this and this makes you feel a great deal of empathy even for the bosses that you defeat. More often than not, there's a duality to all of of the Souls games bosses, that there's a good and a bad side, that something corrupted them, but they didn't necessarily come from a corrupt place. And you know that you're slaying somebody who, who's worth caring for, or that just had a tragic turn of events that led them to become this beast or this, this monster of a person. Beautiful creature designs. The other thing that, that it's very much worth mentioning, and I mentioned this during the Dark Souls book review, is how they design in a very loose and very non-trying-to-be-perfect type of attitude. I can tell that when they were drawing this, they weren't trying to sit there and perfectly flesh out these perfect shapes. They were, they were working very loosely and being very spontaneous with their line and then using that to create visuals in their mind and spark their visual mind and create based on that. And that resonates in this particular type of art. If you try to overthink a design like this, you're going to ruin it by over tightening your thought process. One of the things that I've always felt very moved by, and one of the things that, that is a bit of a bittersweet experience is my absolute love for nature. And it's a bittersweet thing because it's incredibly beautiful. It is incredibly rich and detailed and diverse, overwhelmingly so. But from an artistic perspective, I find it sad. For the same reason I find Miyazaki's work and the designer's artwork saddening, because it is so overwhelmingly rich that it is hard for me to bottle and grasp. I'm very curious what it's like to work at From Software and what the artists do to keep themselves in the state of being inspired. What they do to, to maintain this mood, to be able to create this consistent feeling throughout their stuff. I'm going to end here on probably one of the most beautiful architectural elements in this entire game, this exquisite chandelier or whatever the hell this thing is that's suspended in the air that you walk across. And I want to end on this note, and I've mentioned it before in the past as well. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but great art requires multiple things. You are not only a technician. You are not only somebody that feels. You're not only somebody that masters the technical side of art. You have to master three things, your mind, your body, and your heart. These are the three elements that go into creating great art. If you're only technical, you're a designer. If you're only emotional, then you're an amateur. And if you don't master all of these different things together, you're not completely expressing yourself. And when all of these pieces of the puzzle come into place, 
after a lot of work and a lot of patience and a lot of and a lot of passion and a lot of frustration which is also passion by the way you end up creating things like this masterpieces so again to Miyazaki and the team at From Software, I send you all of my love and my respect for your beautiful creations. I am waiting with bated breath for Elden Ring to come out. Please, for the love of God, do us a favor and give us just a little other crumb of a teaser or something that we can grab onto. I can't wait for that game to come out. You'll know when it comes out because you'll never hear from me again. And I want to extend my appreciation and my love to you. I really do love you for all of your support and rest assured that it only encourages me to invest more of my heart and more, my, more of my soul on, into this channel, into your lives to help inspire you and give you a place where you can rest your eyes and rest your ears and paint as well. All right, so thank you very much for watching me. I love you all and happy painting. Take care.